Okay, and welcome back everybody, all 400 of you watching the Premier League Season 3 Meet Your Makers vs Absolute Legends. Meet Your Makers on the dial side up against Absolute Legends on the radiant. Now this is game number one in a best of three series. Now these teams are not doing so hot right now. I didn't think either of them are doing that well. In fact, let's just double check of course the Premier League.eu for all of your Premier League needs. We can see exactly how the teams are doing at the moment. Okay, so Absolute Legends currently sitting on 4 and 7. Actually, they're doing alright. 4 and 7 there for Absolute yeah, Legends, while Meet Your Maker's not so hot. 2 and 6. They're looking to chalk up another win here. AL looking to pick up their fifth victory if they can. Now, I should mention that these two teams have played once in the last month. Absolute Legends versus Mime was in the Star Ladder Star Series. And that was Meet Your Makers were the victors in that game. So AL will see what they can do tonight. Now, Templar Assassin, the first ban here, being knocked out along with Jakira also being taken out by Absolute Legends. Now we'll see if Batrider also cops a ban as well. Also, I'm interested to see if Sven makes it through. Of course, Sven, Sven has been a bit of a flavor of the week, really. Has been getting picked up quite frequently and used and banned as well. Getting banned quite frequently as well. But he has been he has proven to be a bit of a monster in that mid-game. And of course, bringing a lot of armor to that mid-game push remaining. as well. But now the second ban here for AL. Will they decide to knock out something like a Dirge, a Bat Rider, Templar Assassin are also gone, but it will be that Bounty Hunter, of course. He has become a very common figure in these games. Lots of early ganking, and of course, just the speed and the mobility that gives a team in a fight with that track just being spammed around really is quite helpful. But as it is, he will be banned out here. This is also going to leave room for stuff like... Darkseer to leak through, in fact, unless Mitra makes it start to ban him out. Now, AL, they do have the first pick, so they could go with that Darkseer. Now, I believe Parkin 01 there is actually Koshkova, I think. It could be, or it could be a stand-in, so we'll see. But they do have at least one stand-in, F and Mad there. Reserve time. But now the second man for MYM, and it will be the Bat Rider keeping that away from AL. We'll see what they've got up their sleeve instead. Dark and it will be the Darkseer the first pick here. They said, you know, if you're gonna leave it in, we'll pick it up. And of course, Darkseer is definitely he's not the the super crazy overpowered Darkseer we saw, you know, going back a couple of months towards the international. But at the same time, he's definitely still a very credible threat in the battlefield. Just less of an insta ban now, especially when there's only three ban, uh, only two bans in the initial phase now as well. Apparently the sound is clipping. One second. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Okay, no, no, it should be good Reserve there. Time. One second, let me bring up. No, that's all right. Reserve time. Okay, well nobody else is responding. I'm, I'm going to assume that it is only one person getting that for now. Radiant Hopefully some other... No, okay, yeah, Flowen says sound is fine. Never mind then. Alright then. So, we have the next pair of picks here for Absolute Legends. Now, Meet Your Makers go with a fairly generic couple of picks here. They picked up Lashrak and Rubik. Two very solid heroes, and of course we've seen Lashrak exactly how powerful he is if he's given that semi-farm, but Absolute Legends, they pick up the Sven, the Magnus, a lot of cleave there, and we've seen this from Zero as well, the Magnus and Sven, these are, well, they can throw on the sort of the ult there from Magnus, or even the Darkseer there as well, they can just use uh, Darkseer, the vacuum, then Stormbolt there from Sven, follow up with the Magnus, but on top of that, mostly it's just a stun, puts them all in the one location, all the vacuum there as well, and then the mass cleave from Sven, even if he gets only a couple of hits in, if he gets a big crit in there, from the Daedalus, which I assume he's going to build, it will be incredibly devastating. But Absolute Legend's going for a very, very aggressive lineup. It's something with this lineup actually we've seen from Zero. The Darkseer of Magnus Sven. The question is what they'll pick to go with it. However, of course, Rubik has picked up his own, or they've picked up the Rubik, so they have their own counter of spells left. And I mean, if they pick up a Vacuum or Magnus's ult from the Rubik, that's definitely kind of scary. Throw in an Enigma, that is definitely some scary stuff there. Lashrak also definitely quite viable in this situation, but a lot of firepower from both teams. A lot of early game potential. That said, though, the late game currently, I would feel in Absolute Legends' hands, but it depends whether or not Meacher Makers are going to go for a late game. If they're just going to go for a mid-game push, because I mean with Lashrak and Enigma, that's definitely a dangerous pair, but trying to push against a Magnus and a Darkseer is a dangerous thing to do. Now, the question is whether or not we'll see a Wisp get slotted in here is definitely a possibility, unless it gets banned off. Nakes being banned off Absolute Legends. That said, though, we've seen Sven overpower Nakes just because, well, Nakes just does not have the same hitting power as a Critten 
as Sven with the big crits and big hits there from that. The third ban from each of makers. I would say AL are looking for supports right now. The Magnus in this situation is sort of a soft support, so I think they're looking for a hard support. Jakira obviously already banned. Rubik picked out. Lashrak also gone. This might leave room. I mean, they could try and slow on some like Alina. We'll see. It will be key for the light ban also under the potential pick. But I think Wisp is also an issue here. And Mitchell Makers, rather than... If they're going to push, I think they're going to try and split up and push. They will not want to try and force big 5v5s because that's where things can get messy. Especially if they're trying to 5v5 under a tower, an enemy tower. That's things where Darkseid can get the jump on them, get a wall down, get a vacuum down. Magnus can follow up unexpectedly with a skewer out of the trees. And then obviously his polarity, his ult there. So definitely, I think if they're going to push, they'll want to split up and just put on constant pressure on the map. And there we go, Mitchell Makers also banging the Lena. Lena's stun is a great follow-up to Sven and plenty of nuking firepower there, as well as the fact, of course, they do need some range support. They could, in fact, go for a Crystal Man. I think that's definitely another viable pick there. Of course, Crystal Man helps Sven and Magnus deal with a bit of their mana issues. Of course, that brilliant aura. Klinks is the final ban from Aelda, along with the Chaos Knight. They decided to knock that out. But now the final ban here from Meet Your Makers, and they decide to get rid of Disruptor. Okay, this means they're probably looking... Well, not only is Disruptor just flat out good with Darkseer, Magnus, and of course, not too bad with Sven either, but mostly it's just a whole vacuum into there with the ult. But the other thing he's really good against is the Wisp. I was that say maybe they're going to try and get their hands up, but no, Wisp has been picked up by Ale, and I've got to say, Absolute Legends have a brutal lineup here. This is not something I would want to meet in a Dark Alley. I would not want to meet this anywhere. And now I, I said that AL, they will want to avoid the 5v5s. I want to just try and sort of split push, get the sort of the one, two man pushes happening. And this kind of screws that. The Wisp, of course, with the Sven, they can teleport to wherever they're needed at any given moment and try and pick off heroes that are trying to push on their own. So if Enigma tries to push his own, Lashrak tries to get a solo push, or even if they try and push together in a lane while they're busy elsewhere, then Absolute Legends have the ability just to jump in behind them and gank them. And of course, Sven and Wiz coming out of nowhere can completely decimate a pair of heroes. But, one second. As Trav said, let there be light as it is now daylight seeping through my windows. It's been up since about 2 a.m. It's now 8 a.m. Anyway, rolling along here. The fourth pick here for Meteor Makers. What have they got? They are looking... I get the feeling Rubik and Lashrak are supports here. The question is whether or not Enigma is going to jungle or suicide. Against Sven... And potentially Wisp and possibly the Magnus as well jumping. Although I think Magnus is going to try. Magnus is interesting. I think they will try. They're either going to try and. I would say they're going to try and suicide with him. But Magnus is also a suicide hero. Darkseer is also a suicide hero. That's it. He could be mid. It's kind of hard to tell. Undying Lashrak and Rubik. Now this feels like an offensive try on here. This could actually be an Enigma solo safe lane. Or solo mid. If they're planning to run the Undying Rubik and Lashrak together. They might even try to jungle offensively with Enigma. We'll see. But of course, Undying in the Trine, uh, his pr potential pressure there from him may be enough to basically cut down on Sven's farm. If they manage to slow down Sven's early items, that will definitely cripple him. And if he doesn't get that BKB early on, of course, the Tombstone Zombies are absolutely ferocious. And just slow him down, it allows the enemy team to kite him way too much. <clears throat> Reserve time. And that said, the final pick here for Absolute Legends depends whether or not Darkseer is going to take the mid. Magnus, sure. I mean, Magnus, oh, no, okay. This is possibly, Magnus or Darkseer, either one could be mid. I was going to say Magnus could be pulling that uh, easy camp, trying to use that to his advantage, but they've got a Chen already, so I kind of doubt that now. Chen is obviously going to be jungling. They'll have Wisps help out the Sven. And this, I think, could be problematic. If this is an offensive trial from Meet Makers, I think Absolute Legends are going to struggle. That said, if they go with the offensive trial, this gives Darkseer a lot of room to farm. If he can get the early pipe, early mech, combined with an early blink dagger off Magnus, that could be problematic. And that could buy the time Sven needs to catch up on his farm. But it's going to come down to how much pressure the Meet Makers can put on these lanes. If they can take an early tower, force them back in, and a Necrolite being picked up by MYM. They are going for an unkillable lineup here. Undying, Necrolite, that is definitely some hard to kill stuff. And you throw in some good AoE CC in the form of Enigma, Rubik, and Lashrak. This is going to be a hell of a matchup here. I honestly don't know who's going to manage to win this one. I honestly don't know who's got the advantage here. I do worry for Absolute Legends, as we've seen Sven can struggle against the offensive Tron, just because he can... It can be difficult for him to find farm, but I was not expecting the Necrolite final pick here, but we'll see what they go with that. But let's collect the players here. So I should also just switch that off. There we go. 
Okay, so playing for the Absolute Legends on the Radiant side, we have Come With Me playing with Sony playing the Sven, Freezer playing Darkseer, R uh, Mania playing Chen, and Sexy Bambo on the Magnus. Of course, on the Dire side here, we have for MYM, we have Calculus playing the Undying Pack, and I'm not dead sure who that is playing the Enigma. F and Mad there playing the Necrolite, the Nano playing Rubik, and Adsy playing the Shrek. Definitely some support stuff there, Rubik. Uh, the Nano and Adsy pretty much the dedicated support players there for MYM. And it does look like an offensive try, and indeed, they are looking for a bit of a sweep here. Where are they going? They've got some wards. Yes, they have some wards, counter wards as well, and they could actually pick somebody off here. Come with me, we'll be playing support Sony now, getting spotted up, we'll want to back up. Calculus looking for a decay, decides not to go for it, we'll be able to back up here. Oh no, she turns around, cops a hit to the face, I don't know why he turned around there. It's a bit of a dodgy move, but a lot of die heroes here within close proximity, although it looks like Necrolite will be taking the solo mid enigma, heading to the, the solo safe lane. And this is going to be a rough lane, I don't see Sven getting much early farm. The Absolute Legends forfeit game one. No, they did not. This is uh, so far both teams for both teams on an even footing. Depending on an admin decision, uh, MYM may forfeit the first game. We'll see. They were very slow in getting ready. <clears throat> we will see. Absolute Legends, on the other hand, are not in any danger of forfeiting any matches. Anyway, so Freezer now giving chase here to F and Matt. Okay, no, it's actually going to be the Enigma solo mid, and it will be the Necrolite taking the solo safe lane. All right then. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Magnetor Solar Mid, though, is going to have that nuke value. He's going to be careful with the Eidolons because a couple of Shockwaves will be able to cool through the belly Eidolons. See there, the damage from level on Shockwave, not huge, but once he gets a few levels in it, the Eidolons will have to watch out with his positioning on the Eidolons there. And this is what I mean about Sven getting no early farm, just being forced back like this. On the other hand, Darkseer should be able to get his farm rolling here, as well as, of course, Magnus getting his early farm. So he can get the early Arcane Boots, Blink Dagger. That'll be troublesome, and it'll be hard for them to push against. And this may just delay the game long enough to spend to find room to get those items. Because, I don't know, I'm still not convinced on the late game potential there on the Necrolite. Obviously, he can become very hard to kill, but then again, Sven can uh, hit really, really, and I mean hit really hard. He gets a... He gets a... Daedalus in there. He can really start to swing out big. Daedalus, Assault Curious, Mask of Madness, he can really start hitting seriously, seriously hard. Throw on a BKB as well, and he doesn't really care too much about the Disables, apart from the Black Hole. And of course, Calculus' spells do start to uh, become less and less effective as the game wears off. Now we see F-Mad now trying to stop him from pushing in here. Darkseer, though, just going to tank this. Of course, he does have a shield, plenty of regen left as well, though he's taking a fair bit of damage from this creeps. He's cutting a little bit fine. At the same time, he's putting early pressure on the tower here, and F-Mad's got to choose. Does he come back and harass, or does he sit up there and farm against the tower. Of course, at the same time, if he moves into the tower, he's also going to cop damage here, and he can't spam that early on. Is another bit of an issue here as well. See a potion being popped there by Freezer, though, just going to heal up. Meanwhile, the mid, the Magnus there against Packin. Packin going to have a fairly easy lane advantage. Hit 10 and 0 there for the Darks at the moment. Packin currently sitting 7 and 4. Enigma there. 7 and 0, though, for Sexy Bambo. Sexy Bambo actually doing pretty well. Now, 60 Bambo is normally, well, going from uh, Zero's lineup, he was actually the, their suicide solo player, but in this case, it looks like Freezer is going to maintain that role, and Sexy Bambo will now take the solo mid by the looks of things. Meanwhile, though, top lane, Freezer now going under the tower. This is not looking too good for Necrolite, although the tower now aggroing on Freezer, and Freezer having to back up. Looks like he's still trying to bring that, uh, build that solo ring. You can see the health potion being burned there by F and Man. That said, Darks here running low on regen items, although he picks up. That ring of regen, whereas Necrolite looks like he's still building towards Tranquil Boots. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, Sven, 2 and 0 currently for CS, not getting squat there. At the same time, Undying also doing really well for himself. The Death Tail Cases back split up, misses, so Sony should be able to walk away from this. Tether being used to speed up Sony, although it doesn't quite cut down on the trees. Sony now duking his way through the trees, so trying to cut line of sight. Has picked up one level in Warcry, decided not to use it though. Meanwhile, Gank on top, F and Mad in some trouble. Chen has come top to help out. There's the first blood. And Freezer runs him down. The Iron Shell level 3 and the Surge, enough to deal some serious problems for him there. And they've also brought in the Centaur, and it looks like Mania has decided also to pull the Creep Wave away. This is going to stack up a double wave, but he's buying time to cause a bit of damage to that tower. The Necrolite has returned. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane. Look at they found any openings to gank Sven just yet, but what they're doing right now is enough, although there we go, Telekinesis decides to pick him up on the spot, split out this wall, should be able to get this, no, 
gets healed up by a magic wand, throws out the stun bolt. Uh, looks like Wisto goes a little bit too deep. Needs to be careful. They're looking for another decay. He's gonna throw it down. Gets Wisto there with a decay. Tower though gonna cause damage. Here come the orbs. Not quite enough. Wisp walks into a split earth and takes a fall there, but stuns coming up for spend. Stormbolt level two gets a hit. Can he get the last hit in? There we go. Gets a kill. May pay for this though. Decay is ready in eight seconds. Another hit there. Pops a magic wand. Decay is up though in a second. Four seconds. Wisp tether start in. This might be what Sony needs to stay alive. Needs to juke. No, what's he done? Oh no, the creeper blocked him. They got vision from Wisp there. And the creep screwing over poor old Sven. It looks like they might even get another kill here, although no decay ready. Although he might even just try and run this down. There we go, tether through. Wisp now juking back and forth with that tether. That was an unfortunate result there from Sven. Unfortunately, AI saying free hugs for Sven. Sven not enjoying them at all. Dyer's top tower is under attack. A shockwave in the mid lane though, 21 and 3 here for mage. But that said, those wild things are looking a little bit messy here for the spend. At the same time, they're winning the jungle, they're winning the top lane, and their mid lane is going quite well. At the very least, they're not losing it. And they're going for this turn. This top lane here, you see Necrolite sitting on 16 and 3, but he has died, and he's about to probably die again, in fact. We see Darkseid being, oh no, he picks up the aggro. Anyway, the is here though, needs to dodge. We'll back up. F and Mad though taking a fair bit of damage. Freezer also backing up. Does have a potion up his sleep. Might actually counter attack in a second up the heal. Split Earth dodges. Nicely done. Heal pop there by F and Mad. He's running low on mana once again. That's it, of course. His level 2 passive is giving him that extra mana regen, I believe. How much? Yeah, 4 mana a second. That is definitely helping out quite a bit. Meanwhile, they are looking for a kill down here. Do we have another Storm Bolt coming up? There it is. There's the Storm Bolt catching both heroes. They're looking for As he Can they find a Soul Rip being used there? Wisp now falling a little low. Needs to be careful. Decay getting tossed in again. Wisp gets taken out. And Sony doesn't have the speed to finish him off. They were a little bit over-aggressive here. Should probably focus on playing defensive now. Uh-oh. We've got the Edict being popped there, but it's not enough. It's being bounced off by the neutrals. F and Man now in some trouble. That Iron Shell doing so much damage. We're out of spells, though, for Freezer. Do we have a heal coming up? No, we don't. F and Mad, though. Actually surging the Centaur for it. Centaur looking for that last hit there. One more Centaur though going down to the tower. In fact, if Freezer decided to charge in after him, it might have been the end of him. He's got a Soul Ring coming up as well. Probably should have at the very least waited to cut him off on his retreat. That could have been a kill there, but decided not to in the end. Nice attempt there with the Centaur. Well, top lane though, Freezer's still working on this top tower, we'll need to dodge a split earth there, oh, cancel, 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 Atsy still trying to side surge forward there, Atsy now dodging away, gets picked up by the telekinesis, onto a split earth there, tower still not aggroing him though, Edict though doing a lot of damage, vacuums them back together, still hasn't aggroed the tower yet, Magnetor skewers them backwards, has got a shockwave, pops his ult, only hits one hero though, he's going to finish him off, doesn't use the shockwave, and here comes another port in, do we have an ult here, it's Necrolite, he doesn't have his ult yet, but we'll finish him off with a fade bolt there, it will trade one for one, as Darkseid does manage to slip away into the night. Meanwhile though, Chen is still farming relatively well, I believe. Ten, actually no, Ten and O hasn't done all that much. Tower, top, top tower gets denied, so a good result there from MYM. They're staying even on kills, managed to pick up a deny on the top tower, so that's really t I think that's really slowed things down the top lane. And also it's denied Chen and Sven a lot of money. Fortunately, Chen appears to have been roaming a little bit, so he's a bit down on the money. I thought he'd have a little bit more, but he hasn't. See the Wildkins now, need to work on that easy camp. See some shockwaves in mid. That said though, of course, Magnus as well as Darkseid are doing well on the farm, but at the same time, so is the Enigma. The question is, what is he going for first? We'll see. I've got to say though, Necro now, a little bit vulnerable in this top lane to what ganking. He's you? lost his town. That's really, not so much the fact that he can hide behind it, can do some damage. The main thing was, that's where his TP reinforcements came from. And you see, every time they, if there's a turnaround, it's people teleporting in. He's lost that now. He doesn't have that mobility from his team to come up and aid him. So when he's here, the closest point they can come to is all the way over here. That's a long hike to get to him. So if somebody jumps him, there is no instantaneous help. Whereas before there was, help was all of three seconds away with a port. <laughs> More decays down here as well. Just going to harass Sony. Split Earth coming in. Will they find the target? No, decides not to go for it. Meanwhile, bottom lane though. Undying 27 to 7. Farming well. I'm going to bring the gold per minute here. Magnus and... Okay. The 300 mark at the moment has been broken by both Magnus as well as the Darks. Both those heroes farming well. As we've seen Darks, if he gets the early Piper mech, he can really make his team tough to deal with. If he can throw in an Arganim Scepter as well, though, in this situation, I don't think any of these heroes are going to have a lot of auto-attack power notes. Uh-oh, Chen caught out. Doesn't have any defensive creep either. Of course, the Sage, I've got to say, is the most useless creep to have. This nuke is pretty pathetic. 100 damage, 125 damage is really crappy. 
And it's slow too. It doesn't even deal that much damage with the attacks. Not like a Furbolg. Furbolgs are good. The Net Creeper, honestly, though, one of the most versatile. Now, this is what I mean. Effin Mad, he's got no help, got no matter. He's got no hope at all. Here comes an Arshell. Surge in two seconds. Radiance and Effin Mad, he's history. Here we go, Surge, although can he juke in time? Looks like Darkseid, no. Okay, he does have a hope. No, vacuums in backwards there. Will we see it in time? Looks like they... What the hell was that? I think he misinterpreted what that spell was. Undying, though, picks up a kill there on Sven. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. So Darkseid was a little bit too... So he ducked back. If he'd gone forwards, he probably would have picked up that kill. In fact, though, sort of chicken out there for a moment. Calculus Oak, and he's skewered backwards. So it looks like they're going to lose his tower. In fact, Sexy Bambo may have been too aggressive here, although Radiance no mana left there on pack and to stun. So he will manage to back off then. So a tower trade down in the bottom lane there. The MYM probably have built a bit of advantage. 1k gold advantage. Experience also very even, though. That's it though, still the farm is going well for Darkseid as well as Magnus. Mordecai is being shared about there. You see the shockwave is being sent out towards Kakos. This is him once again, we'll strike him. Shockwave, no, Popsy, oh! You should have known better. Didn't want to give him any opening there. It's a pretty expensive ult there, of course. It's a two minute cooldown, but still gets a kill at the very least. Could have used a shockwave instead to finish things, but regardless. Effin Mad now is in trouble. Here comes the Iron Shell. Effin Mad doesn't have his ult off either. Ten seconds away. Pops over the hill. Here comes Magnus. Gets stunned. Though, throws out a shock. Like they get the kill there. Do we have a black hole? Yes, we do. So Magnus gets away with a skill. Freezer now. Take his down to the track. Is looking. Bro, he's already spent his stun. Freezer still gunning for it. Hangs his mind. Backs up. There goes a stun there from Sven. Sven now getting hit by the decay. Pops his ult. Solar thrown in. Split Earth gets tossed down. The zombies are here. Mania now about to change his mind. Sony taking critical damage. Sony is down. Bambo trying to back up here. Tether is down as well. Wisp also trying to back up the cave will finish him. And now Chen also another kill. Great counter attack there from MYM. Getting a bunch of kills but they're not done yet. We've got another stun. There's a Malefice on Sexy Bambo who's been a little bit too aggressive. A split out to follow and that is a four kill streak there. An ultra kill for Calculus. That is not what you want to feed the Undying early on. He's looking for an early Hood of Defiance. That is definitely bad news. And Mech are probably coming out on the... No, not on the Enigma. Might be the Necrolite. Necro hasn't been getting much cash. Enigma is in fact going for a black... King Bar, which is good, but of course Magnus can of course stun him out, but that's it, Magnus' stun is short range. Of course, the reverse priority you see, not a very big range, so it may be tricky to land, especially without the uh, Blink Dagger. Radiant doesn't have that yet, in fact, he's not even looking that fallen. close to it either. Gold unit wise that carries, I mean, the semi-carry for the die is of course effing mad here, and GPM wise, 337, has managed to pick up a bit, recover from Darkseid's beating, but at the same time, Sven is a long way behind, 211, so that's the big deal here. I cannot hop a route because the admin hasn't made a decision. And it may take a little while. The admins are actually traveling at the moment. So they might not reach a decision. It might be a reverse game. They might reverse the decision of the game for all I know. We'll see. Shen going to take another creep there. Wister unable to find a target. Meanwhile, you know, I'm back in mid. Going to continue. Well, just pushing that lane back, but at the moment, I think their next choice target is going to be this top tier tower here. It's just the fact they don't have much reinforcements, if at all possible. Haste room being found there by the Shrak, although passed over to... Looks like Magnus will bottle it up in a moment. Calculus, so far away, his Hood of Defiance is finished up too. This is really going to help him out in terms of damage here from Freezer. And looks like he throws down the Zombie Horde, ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe there. Freezer now deciding to back up instead. You know, we'll wait for him to get rid of that Tombstone as well as the Neno being there. That said though, we've got to remember Undying is really going to lose his punch in the late game. It's going to be hard to kill, but his zombies are really going to become a lot less useful and his ult's not going to deal as much damage as it once did. And he's going to be far more ignorable. That said, Necrolite. It all comes down to whether or not they can deal with Necro in that late game. Between Necro and I would say Asti, but Asti hasn't had a lot of fun. But here we go, they are going after this top tier, top tier 1 tower. It looks like the counter push is on the side, not to defend, the rainy goes, let's just take a different tower instead. They'll trade towers here, Chen should be able to help them push fairly efficiently. But at the same time, they are behind, they did get the, the die, had the jump on them here, and of course they've got the Ardlons as well as Edict to help them push through quickly. See, Pack can actually take, the Enigma actually taking a fair bit of damage here from the tower, actually going to accept the tank for a bit, of course he's got double heals here, it's not a big deal for him to tank this damage, of course Soul Root. As well as the Death Pulse are both available there. You see the ult being popped by Sven actually pushed out to go for the tier 2. So, you know, show tier 1, straight tier 2s. In fact, here we go. 
They are actually going to push tier 3s as well. And one say, alright, let's trade for tier 3s. Let's go. You've got to come back and defend this. Absolute Legends are going to accept that damage for the most part on their tier 3 tower and trade for the tier 2. It's going to take them a while to get it though. They are missing Whisk. That said, Whisk can teleport them in if necessary. Whisk is going to go for it, I think. He's going to teleport himself back. They are going to trade for the tier 3, but looks like... Oh no, Glyph gets popped. They might actually just have to settle for a deny here. We'll see actually... We'll see in a moment. Calculus taking a fair bit of damage there from the tower. Surging there from Arxie. Gets a vacuum in still. Fiora and there's the ult. They get a whole bunch of kills. And Stormbolt to follow. They pick off three. Absolute Legends with the absolutely painful counterattack there. And now the Neno trying to back up Death Pulse. Oh, Pulse Nova there from Lestrak. Lestrak gets picked off. And now they're giving chase here. The Neno though out of mana. Can't teleport. Five seconds. Gets boxed in. There we go. That's a wipe folks. But an expensive one at that. They lost a tower. That was a very expensive wipe for them to get. A four staff though, being pretty much finished. Rubik now just needs a recipe. In fact, actually no, he still needs a thousand gold. It is a fair way off, actually. Radiance top barracks are under attack. The racks actually being pressured there by the creep still. I mean, if you're gonna trade a tier three tower at 40 minutes in. I mean, that's probably the best way to do it. Get a team wipe in return. It's a lot of experience to share. In fact, if you can check that, see the experience just skyrocket there. Although at the same time, the gold deficit being recovered a little bit. In fact, a fair bit. You see all those kills picked up there. A little bit there. Of course, they'd trade an extra couple of towers in return, but of course, those kills definitely very vital. Let's see, Chen, Stark, and Boots. Darkseid, though, has almost finished his own Hood of Defiance. How is the pipe coming along? Undying almost has a pipe finished. Wisp also making, picking up some magic resistance as well. Sven also with. Looks like he's going for the BKB first. Let's bring up items here. That said, Sexy Bambo has picked the blink down. We saw how devastating that in the follow up there from him was. Of course, secure in just to get distance on them, following in off the vacuum and getting his ult off there. Absolutely crushing him then with that polarity. Freezer now, gonna push his top lane with the help of Sony. They are gonna back him up. We've gotta remember, Sven with just a BKB can get a lot of attack speed out there from Wisp. We've gotta keep that in mind. Wisp with level 2 tether now has gone for level 4 in his orbs. Glyph being popped there by the Dire. The Dire though, gonna trade again, going for this mid tier 2, gonna trade for their top tier 2. Sven though, I don't think he wants to pop, does not want to pop his ult. I don't know if they can get this in time, they may be trading another tier 3. Be a dangerous result here, uh oh. Tier 3 taking some pressure here. Looks like they're going to so they're gonna spend their time. They're whisked out, tethering up here. Going to pop his orbs again now. We're going to see the teleport in a second, I think. Or not. It looks like MYM have decided to back off. I think they are definitely worried about Magnus. Magnus has his ult up too. Definitely bad news. See there, he's sitting on the power trace. He's mostly just mana more than anything else. Of course, Magnus has got serious mana pool issues. He's going to spam at that shockwave. But now the pressure is back on. And it looks like they're going to try and put their own pressure here. Sony and Kelvin, it depends how long they think they can hold this. Between the Wildkin uh, Tornado there, along with Iron Shell and the Shockwave Spam, they might be able to do this. They've got to watch out for the counter gang, so of course, if they're not careful, the ports can come in here and then just blindside them Dyer's up here and catch them completely attack. off guard. So they're willing to watch out for that, especially without any magic immunity. Spend now just going to cleave his way through this creep. Has gone for four levels and cleave. Only one level in the Warcry right at the moment. Shockwave again. They pop the pipe though. We see the harassment there from the tornado. Vacuum in. Here can we go. Magnetor, Wisp and Spend. Are they going to teleport in? They get the shockwave in. Telekinesis there as well. As we see the black hole. I think Rubik stole the polarity there. It's kind of hard to tell though, but it looks like they're going to port in. There we go. Wisp. As well as Sony, they have arrived. The tombstone is down. They're getting a chase. Vacuum, though, skewer being used to knock Pack in there out of his uh, out of his teleport scroll, and they will get another wipe. Very nicely done. Absolute legends, completely cripple them there. Mime losing two huge team fights in a row. They get a bit of damage there on the tier three, but at the same time, they lose a couple of towers in return, and now the push on mid. That's a wrap, folks. Do we have any buybacks there? Uh, let me just double check there for the radiant side. Yes, Wisp did have to buy back during that fight. Sven, no. Darkseid, no. And Magnus, I don't think so. No, not with that much money. Yeah, so that was a great wipe. We've got to remember, this early in the game, it's only 18 minutes, and that's a very inexpensive buyback from Wisp. It only cost him 450 gold. The ult now, but Sven, what? Didn't even use his ult during that fight. What? 
Alright then, didn't even bother to use his alt pipe, gets popped by the rating side. Now gonna take down his tier two as well. Absolute legends fighting back hard. We see the gold now in their favor. Experience-wise, well in their favor. This is what's really landing them an advantage in this fight. This is a huge experience gain. I mean, it's before the 20 minute mark. Experience really is king. These level two alts completely crushing their opponents. And of course, when you've got heroes like Wisp who really want these levels, wants to get Tether up, of course, the overcharge up as well. Definitely, they need that stuff on top of that. Calculus, though, pipe is done, but of course they... Oh, Feta Courier. That's uh, somewhat upsetting. But there we go, Enigma now. Of course, he's got the Black Hole, but they've got to watch out. A great counter-initiation uh, counter there from Enigma. It's just they did not have the burst damage in time to deal with that, to really make it work. And I could have sworn that Rubik actually stole the reverse polarity there. Now Magnus as well going for the... Wow, okay. A Daedalus there on Magnus as well. Okay, they're going for mass damage here, but it looks like they are going to pick off Chen. Chen getting caught out with his pants down in the jungle. Sony actually turns around and decides to gun for it there, though. They've actually... Is that Chen's... I think that's Sony's still out there. There's a Magnus on the vacuum as well. They're going to crush the Dire Team again. MIM just walking face first into these ults from Magnetor and the vacuum as well. They're going to lose Necrolite in a second as well. Undying though tries to heal with a soul up. They're out of mana though for Necrolite. They heal it all, but they give them a bit of mana there from the boots. But it looks like they're finished off by the auto attack damage. They try to throw on the pipe quick measure. Chen is still dead. A triple kill there for Sven. Sven could be going for an ultra kill. They can bring down a vacuum back. This shockwave as well. Sven going to try and take a fourth one for an ultra. Does he get it? Yes, he does. There's an ultra kill for Sven. And that is three wipes in a row, MYM. Five down, three times in a row. You look at these kill charts. Just, oh, man, absolute legends are completely trashing them. In these last two fights, they traded to kill a side. Chen died in this one. Wiss died in the first one, but they're not really caring too much. See, the Mask of Madness, the BKB is up as well. Sven is getting all these early arms. This is definitely turning around quickly. And the Daedalus is coming out in the Magnus as well. MYM, it was looking good for them for a moment. They were getting the pressure on the needed. They got Sven cut down his farm, but the team fight potential currently they're just getting picked off time and time again by the ult from Magnus and the vacuum from Darkseer. Just getting caught with their pants down, getting grouped up and slammed by all of this cleave, all of this AoE. It's definitely not going too well from the all. They're just looking, but right now, absolutely, they're just looking for crits right now. Splashing crits all day. See the teleport out there from Wisp. Unfortunately, these uh, looks like. They were looking for the gank, didn't find it though, and then teleport back. Darkseid now wandering the enemy jungle, getting spotted up there by a ward. Rubik also coming Darkseid though, kind of... Uh, it's got 500 mana, it's not too bad actually, but under half on the mana chart there. 20 seconds down, the courier will be back up to the radiant side. Looks like Lashrak has burned his edict, won't be ready for that fighter to decide to go now. Eilon's being picked off, we have 1400 gold for Sven, 3.5k in the bank there for Magnus. Ugh. That's not good news at all. Enigma also sitting on a BKB in 1400 gold. Goal, oh wow, experience to 20k deficit at the 21 minute mark. That is definitely some painful stuff there. And a 7.5k gold deficit. Let's bring up the hero levels. Well, I can find it. There we go. Hero 16, 15, oh my god. 16, 15, 14 versus 11s. 10 and 8. That is definitely painful news. That's where all that experience is really coming into its own. Just these level 2, level 3 ults. The Radiant possibly about to lose their courier for a second time in a row. Let's see the net worth there on the Radiant side as well. Wisp now scouting out with the orbs, doesn't find a target though. Meanwhile, Effin Mad. Just gonna jump into the jungle and farm. He has picked up that mech there. Radiant's middle tower. Just right now he doesn't have the staying power that he wants. Really will in fact he gets this lineup, in fact he needs armor. like they need armor right now. If Necrolite wants any staying power here, he really needs a bucket load of armor. And that will really help him out quite a bit, because most of their firepower, and they're sort of going past the about 30 minute mark, most of their firepower is going to be in the crits from Magnus and probably Sven. I kind of expect his next item to be uh, a Daedalus, or the Crystallis and then Daedalus. Of course, Magnus has already finished his own Daedalus, but all this physical power, that's where their damage is going to be in. So of course, lots of armor, so a Shivas or even an Assault would be really helpful. Probably Shivas first, then Assault. 
Shiva's of course slowing the attack speed and then of course the negative armor from Assault is always nice as well as the bonus armor for your entire team. Vladimir's offering also would be helpful. Again, just anywhere you can find this extra armor would help him out quite a lot. It looks like the next target is Calculus. Looking for trouble here. Don't know if they'll find it though. Now, Darkseer 1800 gold in the bank at the moment. It's like Rubik currently sporting Iron Shell. It's going to push this creep wave back. But that said, Absolute Legends are looking for a bit of push. I mean, they could go for Roshan if they wanted to. In fact, do they have anybody working on Vlad's offering for Sven as well as Magnus there? That would be helpful indeed. And there we go. They are going to go for Roshan. Sven actually burning his ultimate there to try and speed this up and see Wisp on the high ground. They're waiting for somebody to try and initiate in there. And then Magnus is going to charge in. Of course, Skewer is way down there. Open just blink down up to him, however he wants to go in. We see the tombstone tossed down, some stun down there, Roshan can the bash off. Now Magnus actually goes in, not too sure about that one. I think he was a little bit over eager there. Delkinis is down, Sven, Sven copy of the damage, kills the tombstone. The Wisp scouting things out there with the orbs as well, actually losing a fair bit of health though. Hasn't also picked up, and he charges there on his urn of shadows. Meanwhile, the teleport back there from Dark, he's going to ward off that top line, make sure they don't lose the racks unexpectedly. There we go, Sven has picked up his crits. I'm doing about 400 crits at the moment. Of course, God's strength is turned off. But he's on his way to his own Daedalus. Meanwhile, we have the Undyne working on probably an Argonim Scepter. Necrolite picking up a Ghost Scepter. This is definitely going to help him out quite a bit. The Ghost Scepter, not a bad idea to pick that up either. Definitely a smart buy there. Probably see quite a few of these heroes on MYM side buy a Ghost Scepter when they can. So it will just cut down the, well, basically the auto-attack damage coming out from Magnus as well as Sven. See a port coming in, where are they going? Oh, back to base, never mind. Whisk is picking up some mana, in fact. And it was boring, never mind. Thought somebody was about to get a uh, surprise butt sex there. Calculus, though. Just trying to farm the hard camp there. Bambo, though, going to take that for himself. Overpowering himself, there we go. 600, 700 crits. And this triple centaur threat at the moment from Chen. It looks like he's just trying to bulk up, has picked up a Vitality Booster as well, probably just sit on that. I'm surprised he actually didn't go for the uh, Point Booster. Sure, he gives 50 less health and it's a bit more expensive, but of course he can build it towards the Arganims a little bit later, which makes him a little bit spammy, makes his heal also more effective. And, ooh, vacuum back there, Sexy Mammo gets picked up. What did he get there? I think he picked up over power. Yes, he did, he got in power there. And here we go. Now, I've got to say, MYM, they've got to watch their intervals here. They are really getting picked up just by these vacuums as well as dots. Of course, it is hard. I mean, they've got a lot of free positioning and power there on absolute side. Of course, you can vacuum some people in, and then, of course, Magnus can go there and vacuum more people in from that side, and things just get messy. Or you can just jump there and vacuum more people in from there. It gets really, really messy with their two ability to do, like, basically double reposition the other team. It's very difficult. I mean, it's all good and easy to say that they need to watch their spacing, but it's very difficult against this lineup that they have. There we go, what has Sven got? Uh-oh, Daedalus is waiting for four more gold. Oh, Magnus just jumps in and picks off a hero while waiting for Sven to pick up his item. Fortunately, Calculus is getting picked off, and this looks like a Rax incoming. Does he have five back? Yes, he should. Yes, he does. He will need to burn that by the looks of things. They're going to need all hands on deck to stop this. Glyph gets popped. There we go, there's the fire back. Here it comes. Pipe gets popped as well for Absolute Legends. And still got the heals there. Wits getting ready to tether up. There we go, tethering up. Here we go. Sven now have got the overcharge on him. Sharing through this tower. Can they stop him? We see... Oh. Tower goes down. We see the Decay is getting tossed out. There's Magnus. Jumps in. Gets a double stun down. Can they pick up Enigma? The oh, vacuum back in. Looking for Black Hole. Doesn't happen. They pick up Enigma. Rubik's down. Necrolite is down. Buyback there from Lestrak. Buyback from Rubik. Necrolite as well. But without the ult there from Enigma, I don't think this is going to happen. There's just too much firepower in the form of Sven. They even try to pick up the Wisp. They can't even kill the Wisp right now. I think that about sums it up. You can buy back as much as you want. You just can't kill the Sven. If you can't kill the Wisp, you can't kill the Sven. And look, so no, no storm bar. I think they're just turning around and saying, okay, okay, let's just get the racks. No, no silly business here. Just get the buildings, clean these up, and then head off back. You see a 14k gold lead for the Radiant and a 25,000 plus experience. And there we go. GG go next. 28 minute victory there.
four absolute legends. I mean, it was looking good for Mitch and May because they had a good early game. They saw what they were doing. They were doing it correctly. You know, they put keeping Sven down. The mid lane was going all right. Obviously, the top lane wasn't going fantastic, but there wasn't much they could do about that. Of course, Darkseer versus Necrolite. I just thought the Necrolite pick just kind of let them down a bit. But as it was, great counter-attack there for Absolute Legends. And I think just some slightly overzealous pushes there. Just really, they just couldn't push that early against the Magnus and the Darkseer. Just the vacuum and the polarity was just too much for them, pure and simple. As it is, short five minute break guys, and then we'll be moving on to game number two, Mitchell Makers versus Absolute Legends. <laughs> God rest your soul. As soon as well, MIM leave or uh they finally finish up this rack, so finish up this tower here. Looks like Calculus just wants to make things difficult. Just gonna sit there. Alright, whatever. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I think Calculus is looking for some final kills there. Whatever. Kill Sven, not a big deal. I see the Megas finish this off in a moment. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So an interesting choice there to go with the Necro with the Undying. It was made to be fairly tough, but it just came to the fact that it just wasn't tough enough. The burst damage there plus the cleaves were ridiculous. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Alright. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. Alright, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna disconnect here. I'm waiting for the entire 